channel my name's Sarah and this is like so amazing today's video is going to be my October makes video so as tends to happen another month whizzing by so I've got a lot to share with you this month because I've been doing some pattern testing over the last few months that I wasn't able to share with you and finally everything seems to be released so I can share the makes with you now so I'm going to start with what I'm wearing and this is my first tester version of the Jennifer Lauren Handmade Sorrel Dress. So, I made this first version out of a viscose. And it's a hibiscus viscose, as um, we've got it in the shop, that's what we've called it. And it's this big, bold floral print, and I really love how it looks. So it's got this lovely collar here, grown on kimono sleeves dots all the way through the waist and it buttons down the front. Now I've got snaps on this version so you can see that there. So Jen had actually asked us to do two test versions. So one which was really to help her to iron out the kinks to see if there was anything wrong in the pattern and then a second final version just that she could share once she launched her Kickstarter campaign. So the exciting news is is that Jennifer wants to launch paper patterns because they've been highly requested. So to do this she's launched a Kickstarter campaign and actually within her first day she was fully funded so it's definitely going to be going ahead. So initially the Kickstarter is just for the sorrel dress but I know that she's going to add other patterns in as stretch goals as she goes along. But yeah, if you love this dress, then definitely, definitely go and have a look at the Kickstarter because I know you'll get the pattern at a discounted rate. And I can highly recommend the pattern. I think it's wonderful. I think it's just a really cool casual dress. You can dress it up if you want. There's lots of different ways of going. And it has pockets, which is a hallmark of a good dress for me. So this is my first version. And obviously I'll put a big full length picture in so you can see it properly as well. So there were a few tweaks to make. Now, one thing I will stress, now I've done a blog post on my review of the pattern I found it says 16 dots so eight in the bodice and eight in the skirt that's a lot of dots and if you're using a viscose it's a little bit tricky because it slips around it's maybe not quite as accurate as you'd like to get and particularly with this fabric because it's printed but it's sort of on a white base but dark and then coloured, it's really, really hard to find a marking tool to mark the darts. So I think probably your best bet would be to do something like just running tailor's tacks along if you wanted to be super accurate. But, you know, I just didn't really have the time for that. But my second version I made in a cotton sateen, which was a dream to work with. Really easy to mark, really easy to sew with the darts. So it definitely didn't feel such a chore with the second version. So I'm just gonna show you that one now. So with the second version, I was really torn as to what fabric to use. I just couldn't really make up my mind and I was really leaning towards just a black linen version. Just something that was quite plain that I knew I could wear all the time. But I had just completely coincidentally placed two fabrics next to each other when I was doing a pop-up shop last month. And when I saw them together, I was like, oh my God, they would be perfect to make a dress together. And I kind of couldn't really get that out of my mind. And I did at one point consider making a dress out of both of them for the Socialite Soiree, which is next weekend. But I kind of, I wasn't quite 100% sure on what sort of dress I'd make. And then it suddenly occurred to me, I could do the sorrel out of two different fabrics. And then it would have kind of a blouse and a skirt effect. So that's what I decided to do. So... It's this really vibrant ochre colour and then a floral skirt. And if you can see there, that ochre is picked up in the skirt in the flowers. So I just thought it will look great together. So there she is. So you can see that's how the collar sits. And for this version, I decided to do proper buttonholes and buttons, and I made covered buttons for the first time, and I loved it. But I did, to be fair, I did use a proper um, button machine, and it's the best fun ever. I'm definitely gonna get one of those machines. So, there you go, that's the button. 
the cute buttonholes. So I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I also did the pockets in the ochre colour as well, just so you've got that little cheeky flash of colour. I was considering lining it at one stage because I've got a lovely ochre colour lining, um, but I think just with the time that I had, it would have been too hard to kind of figure out with all the facings and everything what I needed to do. So I just went with this. But yeah, I really love it. I think it's great. My only concern now is I'm not really going to wear this in the winter. So it's going to stay put until the springtime and then it will come out properly. But yeah, as I said, highly recommend this pattern. Definitely go and check out Jen's Kickstarter. I'll leave the link below for you. Oh, and one thing I should add, a little finishing touch, I've added one of my handmade labels into it. So we've recently started stocking the Kylie and the Machine labels and they're super cute. So you've got things like this, which is one of a kind. And this one, which is a favorite, it says it has pockets. So they're really fun. You get eight labels in a pack. So I'll leave the link to them below as well. But yeah, rather than having to buy them from Australia, I stock them now, so really good idea to add a little bit of interest into your handmade wardrobe. So that's those two and then the next two are another test and I was really really honoured to be asked to test Tilly and the Buttons new patterns. So they've just released the Ness and the Nora patterns so if I start with the skirt, so I decided to make mine out of a corduroy just because I really love corduroy at the moment. I think it's really lovely for autumn winter. So if I just stand back, you should be able to see that. It's this lovely wine burgundy colour corduroy and I've done it with the jeans button and then it's got the zip fly there and it's got the back pockets. So really love it. I'm going to show you inside the skirt as well because I've added a few little details as well. So because the corduroy was quite thick I decided to do the waistband in a cotton lawn. So I did it in this little scrap of Liberty print that I had. I think it works really nicely and also the pockets are that same Liberty print. But it just means that you're not having to sew through really thick layers of corduroy which certainly minimizes that and that worked really well and I know that since we tested the pattern the actual release has the skirt a little bit longer but when we tested it, it was it was on the shorter side so I decided so as not to take up too much length when I took it up I did a bias bound hem so I just did um, a little pink trim inside which you're not going to see but it just means that you don't have to take it up quite so much but yeah, really, really pleased with this. I've been wearing it a lot with boots and tights. I think it's a really lovely casual look. And luckily enough, as luck would have it, it goes perfectly with the Nora top. So here's my version of the Nora top. So I did it in this lovely sweat in it. Now we don't have any of this in stock at the moment. It's all sold out, but I've got some alternatives which are lovely as well. And actually they're slightly cheaper. So there's a slightly different composition, but they are really lovely as well. So I've got a grey, a black and a pink. So again, I can leave those below for you. But I really love this, a lovely slouchy sweat in it. And what I did with my version, I actually made a much longer hem at the back. So it's a stepped hem, but I use the longer length version as well. That might have been a slight accident on my part, but I think it was a very fortunate accident that ended up looking great. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. So I'm going to make a second version and actually I probably won't make it quite as long but I think I'll probably go in between the two lengths at the back and make it that way. And then the sleeves I've just done at the standard length but I know the sleeve length has changed since it's been released as well. So there's been a few little alterations since when I tested it. I'm definitely going to make some more of these and that's to come up very soon. I even managed to get some sewing done that wasn't for me this month. So it was my anniversary with my other half. Um, we've been together 16 years now, which is a crazy amount of time. And I made him another pair of the True Bias Hudson pants, the men's version. He loves the first version I made for him and he's been on at me to make him another pair or another 12 pairs if I can. 
So I've made these ones here and he loves them. I mean, I can't tell you how difficult it was to even get them off of him to film this video, but bless him, he did. So I've made them, so we've got the chunky ribbing. So we've got this in stock, which is really good quality ribbing and it is nice and chunky. And then I've made them from this beautiful gray fleece back sweatshirt thing. And it is softest fabric ever. I've made myself some Hudson pants that have a very similar fabric that I got from Stoff and Still a while ago. And I literally live in them. They are so comfy. So yeah, he was really, really pleased with them. And as I said, he hasn't really taken them off. So I'll pop a picture of him wearing them as well. But if you are looking for an easy men's pattern for joggers, definitely go with the Hudson pants. It's a great fit and it looks really lovely as well. And my last make is not a garment, which is quite unusual for me, but the Sew My Style pattern for October was one of the bags from Clume House. I think it's Clume House, Clum House, I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, we had um, a couple of different options. There was the Fremont tote and the Portsmouth tote. And I decided on the Portsmouth tote just because we're a little bit less involved. I didn't have that much time to make it. And I just thought I quite liked the look of the simple tote bag. I tend to use a sort of second bag every day just to put kind of lunch in and stuff like that or whatever I need as I'm running out the door. And that means you don't have to have such a big handbag. So that was my purpose with this bag. Now I made it out of a piece of denim. So it's just a very dark indigo denim. And then I used this black wax canvas. And I'm very aware that it's kind of quite hard for you to see. Anyway, but I decided to kind of go all black on the outside. So I bought the finishing kit from Clue House. And that's the leather straps. And it comes with all the hardware you need. So it's got the rivets and the D-ring and the straps and it's so easy to make that way I love it and um, I've got it full of stuff at the moment but um I can also show you the lining now the bag doesn't actually come as a lined bag it is a really simple pattern but I just thought that I would use it more if it was lined and I would enjoy it more I was kind of worried about how it was going to look unfinished on the inside so I devised a way of making it where you kind of just change the order of construction a little bit and it means you can add a lining. So I've done a blog post for it and again I'll link it for you. Lots of people have used it and they've said they found it really useful so that's good so I'm really pleased with that. Um, but yeah I used this beautiful cotton and steel cotton lining which then even it's black on the outside has got a bit of interest and I also added a magnetic clasp as well just so you can keep your things a little bit safer and it's not going to spill out everywhere. I was considering putting feet on the bottom of it, but in the end I decided just to not worry about that. But I love how it's got these envelope folds in the corner, so it means it sort of sits up properly. But yeah, really, really great pattern. I highly recommend it. And I'm definitely going to be looking into getting some of the kits into the shop as well. But I will let you know as and when that happens. Talking shop-wise, things are progressing, but they're progressing very, very slowly. So I'm not 100% sure if we're gonna be open before the end of the year, but I would definitely keep you posted. Hopefully we're gonna get some more movement this week. And as I alluded to just now, we've got the Socialite Soiree next weekend. So really looking forward to seeing everybody, seeing what everyone's made. I've been working on a project for it. It's gonna be a bodice and a skirt. Um, so the bodice is here, that's done. I'm not going to show you any pictures until it's all finished, the finished article. But yes, it's a jersey bodice and I base this on the Agnes top by Tilly and the Buttons because I really wanted this lovely ruched ballerina effect. This is a lovely stretch velour. Oh, it's so soft, I can't even tell you. Um, the skirt is not finished. Yesterday I spent my day sewing 50 layers of tulle onto a skirt. <gasps> That's a lot. So at the moment, we are just in a candy pink chul nightmare. It's not finished. There still needs to be another few rows of chul added and then we need to hem it and then it will be all done. But hopefully this is going to be the rest of my outfit by next Saturday. Fingers crossed. If it's not, you're going to be seeing me in a red dress. <laughs> so we shall see. 
hopefully that works out it's been a big kind of experimental project but we will see yeah obviously i'll show you that as and when it's finished but yeah i've got lots to be getting on with in november as well but for now it's all about the wrangling of the jewel anyway i'd be really interested to see what you've been making this month so leave me a comment below and let me know and don't forget to like the video and if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe and um, drop the notification bell as well so you can find out when I put any new videos up and I'm going to leave you there and I'll see you very soon thanks so much bye bye